Okay, good evening. I guess I'm doing this at the latest possible moment, so we'll uh, go ahead and get started. So this is going to be my capstone project for AVIA 350. Um, we're going to go through today. We're going to review some of our project parameters, the 1NAV, 2NAV rules. We'll review the aircraft description as well as the conditions that you've imposed for this exercise. We'll also go ahead and review the Liberty Airlines dispatch release and the runway minimums for Baton Rouge. And then we'll answer uh, the questions for the project. So first we'll discuss the 1NAV, 2NAV rules. So in the FOM section 4-17, uh, it outlines exactly the um, requirements for 1NAV, 2NAV. Uh, essentially the principle is one navigation facility, one runway, two navigation facilities, two runways, two approaches. Um, out of those, we will select the higher uh, of the authorized landing minimums, um, which will then give us um, the go-no-go -go decision. All right, so um, we'll go ahead and start with the parameters of the exercise. We're going to be filed a CRJ-200 slant alpha. Um, our flight director and autopilot are both in op. And we've got a notum for the ILS 22 right, uh, having a glide slope out service, which will raise the minimums, and we'll have to use those. All right. So our dispatch, um, we're being released as flight 1972 out of Lynchburg into Little Rock, uh, departure time 1600, hour and a half in flight with an alternate of Baton Rouge and an unexpected arrival time there of 1800. You pretty much gave us the weather, so thank you for that. Um, we've got this nice tempo here, uh, valid from the 12th day at 1800 all the way to 2100 on the 12th day. One statute mile, rain, thunderstorm activity, broken 500, scattered 200 with cumulonimbus clouds. Um, this will give us obviously our go-no decision for um, Baton Rouge. We've got uh, some available approaches here, three runways, five approaches, well, four approaches with one out of service. Uh, so um, up here we have the straight end for two two right. Um, and it gives us our our base minimums here. So um, this one here I have highlighted in red. Uh, this is the standard ILS localizer approach for two two right. Uh, if everything were operational. Since our glide slope is out of service, we're gonna have to use the alternate minima. Uh, which raises it by 210 feet um, <clears throat> and increases our visibility by an eighth. I think that's an eighth. It goes up to three eighths from three quarters. So, um, I'm sorry, reduces our visibility, increases our visibility. There you go. Um, same thing, we've got straight in uh, for one three, which winds up being our most favorable runway, uh, as we'll see later. Uh, standard ceiling 200, visibility one half requirement, uh, and then the straight end for the VOR for left, uh, base of 551 and one and three quarters. So um, I guess depending on how your autopilots and flight directors are set up, um, you may have to round that up because uh, you can't round it down to 550, round up to 560. So we'll use the exact numbers for this presentation um, just to keep it simple. All right, so answers for the questions here. Again, we've got um, the legal, uh, lowest legal one nav alternate. Um, out here we have only hmm, really one that's going to be legal-ish. Um, so we've got the lowest limit of ILS on one three, ceiling 600, visibility of one and a half, right? So one nav rule is 401 added to the ceilings, and since we've only got one approach, that's going to be the lowest one we've got. All right, so uh, going on to the two nav alternate weather, we've got um, runway 13, the ILS again. Uh, this time we're adding 200 and a half, which puts us at 401 for ILS 13, um, and it puts us at 610 and one and a quarter uh, for 22 right with the out of slope glide slope. Um, so we've got two nav facilities, two runways, two separate approaches. The higher hat out of the two would be ILS localizer with the outslope glide slope on 2 2 right, um, which makes it 610 and one and a quarter. 
All right, so is it legal to use BTR as the alternate airport? Uh, short answer is no. Long answer is also no. So um, <clears throat> none of our one nav minimums are going to be legal. Our ceiling is broken at 500. Uh, our lowest one nav is 600. Um, as far as the two nav, since we've got, again, two separate facilities, two runways, two approaches, the higher the two is six, ten, uh, and one and a quarter, which puts us above both the visibility requirements and the ceiling requirements. All right, so if we did not have the notum that put the glide slope out of service for 2-2 right, um, the lowest legal minimum would be ILS localizer on 2-2 right. So with an active glide slope that had the in initial lowest um, starting minimums of 203 eighths, that's probably the only time I've ever seen three eighths, but is what it is. Um, and then since it would give us two approaches, two to right and one three uh, for the two nav, at this point we've got 401 on ILS one three, 407 eighths on two to right. So either one of those is gonna be legal. So essentially what we've done is by having the glide slope out of service, it forced us to use um, the higher of the two minimums on the two approaches between one three and two two right, um, which boosted it up to six ten. So I guess that was the trick question in um, the capstone project. So yeah, that's the short answer. So if we did not have a notum, two two right would be the lowest. We've got um, the summary chart here. We've already gone through. Uh, the same assumptions um, as before. Um, unfortunately, four left is pretty much useless to us you know, because no matter what, um, we're not going to have that as our minimums, right? So that's the end of the presentation. Hopefully, um, I've included everything. We just got home, so I'm a bit tired. Um, but yeah, so there we are. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know, and thank you.